Welcome to a new episode of Ausfahrt TV in English. We are here in beautiful Austria and it's full of snow. That's perfect condition for us to test drive the all new 2015 Land Rover Discovery Sport. Well, it looks like an Evoque, but it's called Discovery and it's a successor of the Land Rover Freelander. To explain this just a little bit, Land Rover is now trying to uh, get three sub-brands in their Land Rover program. So the first sub-brand is Range Rover with the La Range Rover, the Range Rover Sport and the Range Rover Evoque. All the three cars and the sub-brand stand for luxury. Then the, we have the second sub-brand, that is the Discovery brand. Sub-brand with a Discovery, we all know the huge all-terrain vehicle or SUV uh, with seven seats that was built for almost 25 years now. And now the successor of the Freelander, the Land Rover Discovery Sport. And the third branch is the Defender line. Uh, and the Defender line stands for, you know, all the hard work, a hard working machine. And you might know the Defender will be outdated by 2016 and they will show a new model. The Land Rover Discovery Sport had its world premiere in Paris last year in 2014. And at least for us in Germany, the competitors are the Audi Q5, the Mercedes-Benz, GLK or in the future GLC, the BMW X3 and of course the Porsche Macan. Well, all the competitors have one thing, they all only have five seats, while the <laughs> Discovery Sports comes as an option with five plus two seats. Oh, I know, Mr. Z. Well, here she is, my beautiful colleague Sarah, and she's telling you all about the engine. Quite a lovely introduction, Mr. Z. <laughs> Thank you very much. So let's talk about the engines. For the 2015 model year, three engines will be on offer first. There are two diesel engines and one gas engine. The diesel engines offer uh, 150 horsepower and 190 horsepower, uh, whereas the gas engine offers 240 horsepower. Later on, in fall, Land Rover will roll out a very efficient engine, a small diesel engine called ED4, um, but I don't have any numbers regarding the power of this engine. What we have got here in our test car is the 2.2 liter four-cylinder diesel engine with 190 horsepower. So this is the strongest diesel engine. Um, it is good for 420 newton meters of torque and it is all mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission from ZF and it is all mated to all-wheel drive with Haldex clutch. And now talking about all-wheel drive and the Haldex clutch, um, there will be three powertrains in general available for the Land Rover Discovery. Either you can choose between front wheel drive, all wheel drive and a Haldex clutch and all wheel drive with a special system called Active Driveline, meaning the car switches between two wheel and four wheel drive. You can also configure your Land Rover Discovery Sport cars with a manual gearbox, then it is a six speed manual transmission. Let me give you the basic figures real quick. Acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour slash 62 miles per hour, 8.9 seconds. So it's not a race car. Top speed is limited to 117 miles per hour, which equals 188 kilometers per hour. Land Rover claims that you get a mileage of 47 miles per gallon, which equals 6.3 liters on 100 kilometers. By the way, the gas tank is good for 65 liters, so 17 gallons, and you have a reach of 1030 kilometers or 640 miles. This means under perfect condition you have a reach of 1030 kilometers or 640 miles. 
Since the Discovery Sport is an SUV, I have some other figures as well. First of all, you have a ground clearance of 212 millimeters, so 21 centimeters. You have an approach angle of 25 degree, a ramp angle of 21 degree and a departure angle of 31 degree. And once you want to go into water, you can do this. You have a weight depth of 60 centimeters. At least in Germany, a selection of four trim levels is available for the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Our car here is equipped with the highest line, which is called HSE Luxury. And there are also the trim levels HSE, SE and S. Let's have a closer look at the exterior of our test car. As this is the highest trim level, our car is equipped with xenon headlamps and circular LED daytime running lamps. This, is this design is called compass design, by the way. Um, but we even have adaptive xenon headlamps, but this is an option and you have to pay 450 euros extra. But once you have adaptive xenon headlamps, then you get a dynamic um, cornering light and a dynamic, another dynamic adaptive high beam assist. You might have noticed this grey cover here in the hood and under it there is a pedestrian airbag. In case you hit a pedestrian, it is activated in a speed range between 25 and 50 kilometers per hour. And when it is activated, it covers the entire windshield to minimize injuries of the pedestrian. And while talking about this safety aspect, let me just quickly tell you that this car won all five stars in the NCAP test, plus it is the overall winner, and in this respect even bet the Porsche Macan. Since we have the highest option line, our car comes with 19-inch, 9-spokes alloy wheels. The other option lines start with 17-inch alloy wheels and you can configure up to 20-inch. The mirror caps are in the same paint than the car and on the bottom of the mirror caps we have little cameras. Those are not used for a 360 degree view but they are used for the weight sensing so once you drive in the water uh, you have on the display in the middle a real-time um, display a real-time figure about how deep you are already in the water so you can see now i'm too deep that's perfect this color by the way is called firenze red and you can choose between 12 different colors and you can configure two different contrast colors for the roof, black and gray. Uh, we don't have it, but we have a big panoramic sunroof that you cannot open, but at least you can look through and get all the light in. There's not too much we can say about the back of the Discovery Sport, except that you can see that this is the highest trim level HSE Luxury. Here's the badge. Um, you see this shiny discovery lettering here on the back as well as on the front. The rear lights are LED rear lights and um, they are also made in this compass design and the Discovery Sport is equipped with two exhaust pipes. Starting to snow, I got rid of my jacket because I'm hopping inside. Uh, as you can see, the door opens pretty wide and it's really easy to just slip on the seat, just cleaning my shoes a little bit. The door is easy to close, even so you feel the weight of the door. My first impression when I got inside, I was not too impressed. Land Rover uh, is saying they are premium, they have a premium appeal. When I first got in, I was really not impressed by this soft touch plastics here in the front. And I didn't recognize the leather on here. I thought it was plastic as well, because on the door panel, same color, that's plastic, soft touch and that's leather. By the way, it's all Windsor leather and that's the leather you get with the HSE luxury option. So, um, not only leather but brushed alloy and a bunch of plastic which at least feels good. The plastic does. You know, there's cheap plastic and this rather feels like good plastic. Um, from the point of having enough space in the car it does feel spacious 
for instance, uh, the windscreen is going down to the very up here, so it gives me a spacious feeling. And even we have this wide uh, middle, you do have the feeling that your your passenger is not too close um, to you. And we we're, we're talking about a compact or at least mid compact uh, sized SUV, so you do feel that you have enough room in here. And uh, talking about driving the car, you have everything in space. All of the um, buttons and switches are right where you can use them pretty good. Um, even so, I prefer if the whole center console is facing me a little bit here, it just goes straight. Um, so let's check the seat belt. It is really long, right? So even people who like to eat a lot can buckle up here pretty easily. Um, we have those leather seats that are really comfortable. Uh, I haven't driven so much, so I can really give you a long time review about the seats. But as, uh, yesterday we drove about four hours and I had no problems with my old bag. So I think they are comfortable and they work fine. You can uh, heat them. And that's a little bit annoying. You first have to press the button right here and the rest you do on the on screen, on the uh, touch screen. You can either heat them up or cool them down, but you can't do both. So, um, and the heating was pretty hot on my uh, seat. Once I put my hand right here on <coughs> my upper legs, I could feel the heat coming out of the seats. So that's really hot and I really like that, but for a piece of uh, purple, <laughs> but for persons who don't like the heat so much, might be a little bit too hot. Then you can adjust the seats electrically in 10 ways. So you can scoot forward, backward, put the, the backrest in the right position and you even have lumbar support. So uh, the steering wheel is all coated with leather. It's not so um, thick. It's really, a, it's rather small and I like it this way. Uh, the leather feels good and soft as well. You can adjust it manually. And that's the way it goes. For my taste, it could come out just a little bit more, but I think it's just fair enough to get a good position. And you can heat it up with this button right at the steering wheel here. Something about the overview in the car, the mirrors on both sides are pretty big, so you can uh, see the traffic behind you just well. As well for the mirror inside, because you see the whole back window, but the back window is not too big and it's very high. So once you have a sports car behind you, for instance the McLaren, you might not be able to see him because he's so low. Okay, turning my head to the left side, I have a pretty big B pillar and it's not getting smaller once I turn my head the other way around. And back there, not only the C pillar, but as well the pillar next to the uh, door in the rear is pretty huge. There is a little window in between, but still since uh, the line of the car is, you know, shaped this way, there's only a little bit you can see and you might want to look in the mirror twice in order not to miss anyone. Okay, looking at the gauges, we have uh, two round gauges, classic design. Sarah likes them a lot because uh, the scales are a little bit like uh, diamonds or at least blink blink stones. Uh, however, on the left side, we have the speedometer goes up to 240 kilometers per hour, which is a little bit bragging because the car just runs 188. On the right side, we have the RPM meter going up to 6,000 RPM with a red area starting at 4,900 something. In between, we have a display for the board computer and for some information from the infotainment system that come up here, for instance, if you use the GPS and navigation system, right when you have to do something like take a right, take a left, whatever, it's, show, it's it's presenting in here as well. And what I really like is that you see your speed with digital numbers the whole time. 
Uh, by the way, we have a traffic sign recognition in our car and it's shown in this little display as well. And if you're driving too fast, it, uh, it beats sort of, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, glowing up and down so you really see, okay, you do something wrong. What I don't like about this display is the font type because it's a little bit hard to read. It's, you know, I'm always like blinking with my eyes. I'm not sure if this is a revolution. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a resolution of the display or just the font type. I would really like to see a different font type so it's easier to read all the information. By the way, you have a board computer and with this thing you can scroll down. Scroll through the board computer things. The 8 inch um, touch display, you can read it just fine. Same with the font types, it's a little itchy font thing in there. Um, once you have opened the um, shades from the panoramic roof, we had like two or three times that the sun was shining in and you had problems reading the display. Uh, we don't have a head-up display in here, but it's coming soon, a thing about fall, and I'm really keen to see it because they said something about laser technology, which is projecting the numbers in the screen. Kind of like that. Um, okay, we do have an MB light in here, so this little area uh, has uh, five different lights you can choose from and you can have four different um, intensities of the lights and in the door panels right there you have uh, this light shining in as well. By the way the uh, backs here in the door, the, the side panels, they're illuminated in a white color and what I like the entry uh, has a discovery uh, lettering as well that is illuminated in white as well. Uh, we do have, as I mentioned before, the big panoramic sunroof. It's closed right now where the shade is closed. You can open it, of course, it's just one piece. But uh, once you open it, you get a lot of um, light in here and that's neat, especially if you don't have uh, this uh, bright leather that we have here, but rather black or brown, then the whole sunroof gives you more light inside and the passengers uh, in the back can look, you know, what's going on outside and over the top. Last but not least, here's the horn right here and it sounds like this. That's pretty much it. Just a quick walk through through all the compartments. We have uh, enough space in the door panel for half a liter bottle, most probably for a liter bottle even if it's not too tall and some more space for whatever you want to put in there. We have this little compartment right here with a surface that things don't scoot around. Right after we have uh, this little knob that comes out and you can choose the driving program. <coughs> I like it how it drives in and out all the time. Then we have two cup holders here and the half a liter bottle suits in here as well. I imagine a liter bottle will suit in as well because you have this whatever it's called uh, to stabilize the bottle and um, neat thing is the first one there's a little button and you can release the whole cup holder and under it you have a well a secret compartment where you can store stuff you know self protection. Next to the second cup holder you, we have a um, USB port with 5 volts and if you don't use this area you have a little slider right here, drawer, to make it look all nice. The armrest is able to scoot back and forward so even smaller person can use it if you scoot forward the seat a lot and of course you can open it. There's a smaller storage underneath it well, at least enough space for my iPhone and the key. And in here we have two more USB ports, so three all together just in the front, and a 12 volt outlet and some aux in for the infotainment system. And that is a sweet <coughs> Land Rover USB sticks with some music on it, so we could listen to music while we were driving here. Pretty neat. And you have a little um, document holder 
that you can use so things don't get lost. Oops, my iPhone cable is broken. Yeah, okay. On the passenger side, we have a little compartment with a surface that you can put pens or even a little bit of money in here so it's not scooting around too much. Right there, we have a little hook for a purse or bag, so it's a little bit protected from shaking around in the foot compartment. And we have a pretty big um, compartment here for the gloves. <laughs> well, more than just gloves, because look at this, even the safety pack suits in there just well. Uh, looking on the top, we have sun shields on both sides. and. Um, with makeup mirrors, of course. They're even illuminated with uh, this little lamps that you have to uh, turn on manually. It kind of, you know, is not really premium, I think. We have reading lights, and I like this technology that you just touch the lights for the driver, the passenger, or the big entry light. And uh, we have door handles. No, we have handles on all four doors. Having the pleasure to show you what it feels like sitting in the second row of the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Um, also the doors in the back open pretty wide. It is very easy to get in and very easy to shut the door. Sitting in the back of the Land Rover Discovery Sport leaves me quite impressed. And I mean sitting in row two, because there's a third row, but we come to this later. Well, first of all, it is very spacious in here. And as you can see, I have enough headroom and I'm six feet tall. Also, there's enough legroom. Um, this seat here is adjusted to Jan's height, meaning 180. And um, still, there's enough leg room left, so everything's just fine regarding spaciousness here in the back. The seats in here are quite comfortable, but there's more to say about those seats as you can adjust them in several ways. For example, there's a switch here at the sides of the seats, so I can adjust the backrest like this, so I can lean back or go back forward. And um, I can move the whole seat 16 centimeters forward or backwards, like this. Yep. And you might have already noticed that those seats are split into a 60-40 proportion, at least when it comes to moving the seats. But when it comes to flipping this um, seat row, you can flip them 40-20. 40. Moreover, we have stadium seating in here, meaning that the second row is raised a little bit and in this respect you get a nice, you know, all-round view. Now let's talk about compartments. There's also enough space for a half liter bottle here in the door panels and I think that even a one liter bottle might fit into there. There are small nets on both front seats, but they're yeah, not too dimensions, so maybe a little book will fit in there. In the middle console, there we have many connectivity devices. This is something Jan and I really like. For example, there's two USB ports and a 12 volt outlet down there. Then over them you find three chinch ports and then another USB port. And this USB port together with the three chinch ports are um, necessary for our infotainment system, which we have here in the rear. Unfortunately, what we don't have is a remote control, so we are very sorry that we can't show you some more detailed function. By the way, those displays are 8-inch displays, like the display in the front. Last but not least, there is a little compartment hidden here in the armrest, meaning there you find two cup holders in which this half liter bottle fits into as well. But you know, the depth of, of these cup holders is not too deep, it's like this, so a bottle might, you know, fall out easily. 
If you flip up this little cover here, yeah, there's another little compartment uh, in which you might store pencils, for example. And the surface is, yeah, in a manner that things don't scoot around. Furthermore, you can flip this middle area here. You just push a button. So you have the possibility, for example, to score, uh, store shears here in this car. And as this car is at, f at first sight a five seat car, I will take place in the middle here. And I know that I will get out of the picture right now. Um, but I can tell you that sitting in the middle here in the second row is quite all right. It's okay. I can imagine that you could even do long distance traveling here. It's not too uncom uncomfortable. Sorry. <laughs> this is also a car for families, for families with children. So what is important is that the car is equipped with Isofix anchor points and this car, of course, has them. Let's talk about the length of the seat belt. And here we found out that the length of the seat belt is not, yeah, so nice actually. The seat belts in the front are longer, but still it might be possible to buckle up, you know, the seats for your baby or little children. In the driver's seat, you find a little switch, and this switch blocks. The switch is here in the back for the windows, so children sitting here can't open them anymore. And um, this switch also blocks and locks the doors completely, so the kids are kind of safe in here. Now let's have a quick look at the windows. When I scroll them down, you can already see that they go don't go down entirely and uh, we know that Jan's children, for example, don't like that at all. Nevertheless, when I want to close it, it immediately scrolls down again. So here children again are safe. On both sides you find reading lights as well as hooks for your jackets. You can open the trunk of the Discovery Sport in three ways. You have a little switch next to the steering wheel. You have a switch on the key and there's a little button right here. And it opens all electrically. At least the HSS Luxury has this in the base model included. As well as a luggage cover. And you see our tripod case. So we know that it's at least a meter wide and we measured it. You have 111 centimeters of wide between the uh, tires. You can remove this cover here quickly. And just a short look inside. We have a little uh, trap door here with a warning triangle and the tire fit and some uh, tools. We have a 12 volt outlet right here. We have another 5 volt USB plug and we have a little fan control for the air condition in the very back seat row in the third row. And, and we have loading trays on both sides so you can uh, put your goods in here and buckle them up, sort of. We have two leashes here, and if I pull them, those I have two more seats. So keep in mind, we don't have seven seats, you have five seats plus two because the last two are not very comfortable and there's not too much space. Land Rover claims uh, it's, it's this. Two seats are made for persons not taller than 160 centimeters. So just for your entertainment, here's a little handle that enables me to scoot forward this whole seat. And I can press my tiny body in here. And then grab the seat again. Aua. <laughs> Excuse me. And you can see um, as a grown up, maybe for a couple of miles you can sit in here, but you don't have too much space, but at least a cup holder on each side.
if you're using the two more seats, you don't have any space in here in the trunk or what used to be the trunk. But pulling the leashes again, you can flip the seats and this is storage for 541 liters. And if I flip the second row two as well, I have space for 1,700 liters, well, uh, 1,698. As you can see, we don't have a plain surface, even if I press down the seats, and you have a little hole in between the two seat rows. Um, however, you can store goods up to a length of 155 centimeters to this point and if you put forward the passenger seat to the very f uh, front this is about two meters long so you can store goods um, up to two meters in here you can store up to 737 kilograms of goods inside the discovery sport if you want to you can put up to 75 kilograms on the roof and once you have a truck for a trailer, you can put uh, pull trailers up to 2.2 tons. Okay, we managed to get Jan out of the third row, which is only possible, by the way, because Land Rover um, completely redeveloped the rear axle. And due to this rear axle, there's more space. And um, so they were able to install the five plus two seats. However, we want to give you um, a driving um, impression about the Land Rover Discovery Sport. And this time we were not driving just regular on roads, but also we had the chance to go into an off-road parkour. Let's start with our regular road impression, driving experience. My first impression was that it is very comfortable to drive in this car. And this is due to the suspension, which is really nice. Really, I promise, it is very comfortable. Also, the 9-speed automatic transmission does a very well job. There is seamless shifting. You really don't feel it. As except when you're accelerating hard, then you can feel the shifting a little, but um, the rest of driving, it's just fine. And also, um, there's almost no noise. Almost no noise coming from the engine and almost, or, yeah, no, almost no wind noise. Well, in Austria, we are not allowed to drive faster than 130 kilometers an hour. Um, so our experience is limited to this speed, but there was no wind noise at all. The steering gave me a quite strange sensation. Um, it works fine, but um, you can feel that this car is very heavy, two tons with Jan and me in our luggage and everything. The car is high, so whenever you start to make quick steering moves um, yeah you can feel some roll moves of the car whenever you hit the brake the braking pedal it's you you kind of need a little power it's pretty hard to depress but nevertheless the braking power is there of course and the car comes easily to a still stand it's called discovery sport but it's not a sporty suv it's rather uh, an suv for sporty people acceleration from zero to 100 kilometers per hour 8.9 seconds is not too quick not too fast but nevertheless you're still able able to make a spontaneous overtakes on the autobahn for example and um, last but not least this is not a car to really drive fast you know this is a car for cruising and traveling and get from point a to b then we had two chance to go off-road and in this respect i have to tell you that all all-wheel drive models are equipped with a drive system called terrain response and this system includes three modes so that you can drive safely on snow, gravel and grass. The second mode is, you know, mud and um, very bad road conditions. And the third mode is sand. And those three modes um, affect 
several things. For example, the gas pedal um, and then how it reacts to depressing the gas pedal. Um, when you're going off-road, the start-stop automatic is switched off, of course, or you can make use of the decent hill control and there's so much more things um, that you need when you go off-road. Um, we had the chance to drive on snow, on ice, and we were driving, you know, uphill, downhill. We were driving like this, <laughs> which was very exciting. And I can tell you that this car does a perfect job. It managed every challenge. So I'm very satisfied with this performance. And um, I like it when a car manufacturer promises something um, and then keeps and sticks to its promise. And this car here definitely does. Some information about the um, assist system we have in this car. First of all, I want to point out uh, torque vectoring by braking. So once you drive or you corner, you drive into a curve, you have your wheels that are in the inside of the curves and that are at the outside of the curve. So. Um, to keep the ideal position in the, on, the, on the street, uh, it's good if the outer wheels have a little bit more torque while the inner wheels, the curved inner wheels, uh, get slowed down or not so fast as one in the, at the outside. And the new system in the Discovery Sports enables exactly this feature. Um, of course, we have an emergency brake assist. We have a, a collision assist for the back. So when you back up, it looks like there's no one in your surrounding. Otherwise, you get a warning. We have a parking assist. Yes. Hello, America. I know your parking spots are so big. You don't need this. But here in Europe, the slots are small. So this car can park in parking spaces whenever you tell it to do uh, all by, by itself. We have a blind spot warmer, warmer of course, in the mirror glass, which uh, blinks bright and orange once uh, a car is in your blind spot. We have a traffic sign recognition, which works with charm, at least here in um, Austria. The car offers a lane keeping assist or well actually a lane departure warning. So once it recognizes a lane and you cross uh, the, the you, you leave the lane, the steering wheel vibrates a little bit, but it's actually it's just uh, such a, a soft vibration that you're not really sure is it warning me or is it just the surface of the road. Uh, I would really appreciate, you know, some more vibrations or rather a real lane keeping assist that keeps the car all by itself in the lane. And you get a little alert in the uh, little display between the round coaches. Uh, besides that, I would like to point out, since we have a, a package in here, that uh, gives you the big navigation system, the big tainment system with the premium sound system from uh, Meridian. Um, I'd like to say that the sound is quite good. I enjoyed it. You have 825 watts uh, blasting out of 17 speakers and a subwoofer. Uh, so that is fun. By now, they have completely redeveloped their navigation system, the GPS system, and it works much better. Um, once you have tried out the older version, you know what I'm talking about. And they are offering as well uh, something they call Land Rover in control apps. So now you can hook up your smartphone to the infotainment system and parts of the apps you have on your smartphone get mirrored to the system. So it's close, uh, it's, it's working like mirroring from uh, Volkswagen, for instance. Uh, just uh, certain apps work this way, of course. And I was very sad to see that they have Stitcher on there, for instance, or audiobooks, but uh, no. Wow. Um, 
but no Spotify, for instance, which I would really appreciate to have on here. But as you can see, you have your contacts, your calendar, and uh, the normal iPod function from my iPhone that you can use here. Well, it's snowing and snowing and snowing, but we are ready to hit back to Germany. I hope you liked our review about the Land Rover Discovery Sport. Uh, if you did, just give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them below in the comment field. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe because we do this in-depth reviews all the time. And uh, you might want to see some other cars as well. I'm saying goodbye from me and my beautiful colleague Sarah. See you next time.